Amen. Harder to take that step. <laughs> well, praise God. Amen. How's everyone? Blessed. 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 Good. Amen. Let me move this up just a little bit. I think we're good to go. All right. Praise the Lord. Well, Father, we, this is, can we cut the echo out a little bit? We've got a little bit of a you know, feedback. There we go. <clears throat> a little bit more? There we go. That's good. I mean, Father, we thank you for the opportunity, Lord, just to be able to be here. And Lord, to, to bring your word. And uh, Lord, I, I take authority this morning over every spirit of distraction that would hit, try to hit us. And Lord, I, I ask, Lord, for an anointing, Lord, from your Holy Spirit yes, Lord. to bring a message, Lord, that each one of us will understand, Lord. You said your words are spirit and that they're life. And so, Father, I pray that the message this morning brings life to each one and creates with each one of our hearts what we need to hear in this time that we live in, in this time of growth. In Jesus' name we pray and I thank you for it. <clears throat> amen, amen. amen, amen. Well, I, I decided to title this message today. What was it? <laughs> a time to, um, a time to, I, I think it was a time to fight and a time, and a time to kill. That sounds pretty, pretty bold yeah. for a church message. A time to fight and a time to kill. Now, let's 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 uh, qualify that we're talking about spiritually, okay? Because in case anybody, and, and I welcome those that are on, on watching through Facebook and YouTube because they we, we broadcast there, and a, a number of people follow. We don't want anybody to think that we're taking up arms here out at Desert Center, but uh, we are taking up spiritual arms, and we need to understand that because, folks, there's a a time, and we have to ask ourselves, when is the time to fight? And when is the time to kill spiritually? And so we're going to talk about that in a, in, a, in a story that a lot of you have heard. Maybe some of you haven't. Okay? But before we start, I want to show you guys something, okay? Because this is cool. This, this is about 12 years old. And back, uh, back in the day, before most of you guys were here, we had a... Uh, Evangelistic outreach in Rumbleland, and so look at this, Warriors of God, and it has an angel with a sword, and it looks like a sword in his hand on his knees. It is so cool. Now, I wore this for about two hours because I brought I brought a message there at that at at a, at a big revival, and it's a five X. Okay, so. <clears throat> I only worked two hours and I thought about it and, and I thought man it would be so cool to line this up with the message today and I thought I'm going to toss this out whoever catches it gets it because if the women if the guys if there's any five guys that wear 5X you, this is made for you and if there are any women that don't it's a great pajama okay so I'm, I'm right here I'm going to turn around I'm going to turn around I don't fall off the stage Okay, and I'm going to take this thing and I am going to throw it. Whoever catches it gets it. Check this logo out. One, two, three. Okay. All right, give her applause. Whoever gets it. Oh, okay. Check it out. Check check out the logo, man. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Turn around. Look at that. Turn around the other way. Isn't that cool? <laughs> Isn't that right? That is so cool. Amen. All right. <laughs> all right. Praise God. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Praise the Lord. So keep it. Somebody wear it, you know, and, and, and you guys will love that. 
I just had to bring it. You know, I, I thought about that and I thought this is the time. Amen. So this morning we're going to read <clears throat> from the book of First uh, Samuel. We're going to read all of it. You guys know the story. We're going to read chapter 7. I could just talk about it, but I want to read it because I want to point some things out this morning. First Samuel chapter 7. When is the time to fight or to kill spiritually? I could I can answer that, but I'm going to ask you: When when is the time to fight or kill spiritually? Anybody have an answer for me? Anyone? When we're being attacked. When we're being attacked. That's good. Anybody else? The time to fight or to kill spiritually. When God says. When God tells you, yeah, when we're being attacked, when God tells you it's time to do it. I wrote down, <clears throat> when threatened and challenged by Satan, the enemy. You know, in, 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 our, in our relationships with God, Many times when one person is attacked, everyone comes to the aid of that person, right? And and, and, and so it should be. But, but folks, I, I found in my walk with God, and I think you're going to find in yours, <clears throat> there is a fight, though, that everyone has to fight themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And that no one can do it for you. Yeah. Now, see, I, I learned a valuable lesson when I was a, a kid growing up. You know, um, <laughs> I'll just share this with you. <clears throat> I was probably about 13, 14, 14 years old. And I lived next door to this kid by the name of, his name was Ricky. And he was a year, one or two years older than I was. Pretty tough kid. And so there, he, he got into a dispute with a neighbor, another kid. We called him, called him Howard, Howard the Coward. Because <laughs> he wouldn't fight. But he, he came up with this brilliant idea that we were going to ambush our neighbor but, I, but, but left me to do the fighting. So, so I'm going at it with this guy for no, no reason at all. But, but, but we're, we're pounding each other. And I'm getting the losing end of it. Okay, I mean, you know, I held my own as long as I could. Then I decided to exercise a better part of discretion and run. <laughs> so I turned my back and went to, for my door to my house because it was in our near it was in our next door neighbor's front yard. I get to the door and I try to open the door and the door is locked. And on the other side of the screen is my dad. <laughs> he locked the door. Would not let me in the house. Because he saw what I was doing that I ganged up with somebody else to fight a guy. And he said, hey, you know what? You don't fight like that. He said, if you, 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 you got yourself in that situation, you go back and take care of it, or you're going to come in here and deal with me. He had that door locked. I had to go back out and finish the fight. <laughs> Fortunately, my neighbor, he, had, he heard what my dad said, and he says, hey, man, he's right. <laughs> and he had compassion on me. So I got out of that with just a few bruises, <clears throat> and we got it. But I learned a lesson, you know, and I, 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 I think it... it, it, it kind of merges into this message this morning because folks there's a, a time that we have to do it ourselves that we can't game fight everything you know there are people that can pray for you but every one of you here and I, and I bring this message with a passion I ask God Lord give me a, a heart to, to, to minister this to you that I'm not just speaking to bring a word but that you guys understand that every one of you here, at some point in time in your life, will go through your own individual fight and battle in your relationship with God. And the reason that is, is because at some point in time, every one of you will stand before the Lord by yourself. Your friends won't be there. Your homies won't be there. The people here in Set Free, I hate to break it to you, won't be there. You'll stand before the Lord by yourself. Amen. And you will give an account for the life that you live. So, in order to get to that place, to be prepared to stand before the Lord ourselves, folks, we have to be, learn to fight ourselves because we're in a battle. Every, every day in this world that we live in, we're in a battle, a, a battle of good and evil, okay? A battle uh, uh, between 
the angelic forces of God in Christ and the demonic forces of Satan and his demons and his hordes. And we're in the middle of that. And we're targeted by the devil. When is the time to fight or kill? Spiritually? When threatened and challenged by Satan, the enemy. We have to stand up. We can't run away, folks. If you're going through something this morning, you can't run away because this is your fight. Everyone that comes through here, and, and, and many in the community, and there, none of us are immune from our own personal demons and our own personal battles where the enemy comes in and tries to attack us. For some, it might be addiction to something. For others, it may be fear. For others, you may the, the, there's a fear of fear. I, I'm afraid of being afraid. I'm afraid that this may happen or that might happen. What if this and what if that? There are many things in life, okay, that, that the devil uses to try to, to really freeze you. The Bible says he comes to, what about saying he comes to kill, kill, to steal, and to destroy? This is what he does. He comes to lie. He's the father of lies. Now what are you going to do when you're confronted with a person like that, okay, or a demonic force like that, are you going to stand there and just let yourself get hit? Or are you going to fight back? At some point in time, you're going to fight back. I learned a long time ago, and, 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 and probably many of you can agree with this. I've seen people that are pretty passive, but if you put them up against the corner and you keep pounding on them, sooner or later, they're going to fight back. And there are some people here, maybe that's you. Maybe you've been, you're being, being pounded. Maybe it's just going to take a little bit of more pounding to get you to fight. But maybe there are others that are saying, I'm sick and tired of being kicked around. I am tired of the devil pounding me on me every day. I have the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ in my life because of what he did on the cross. Folks, the sooner you recognize and understand what Christ did on the cross for you, and you were able to appropriate that the sooner that you know who you are is the sooner that you'll fight back and have victory. Because the victory has been won. We just need to step into it. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you do it, say amen. amen. So I want to talk about this. And I want to just point out a few things, okay? So we're going to read the beginning in verse 1, chapter 17. And I'm reading out of the New King James Version this morning. You can follow whatever translation you have. Chapter 17. Chapter 17, 1 Samuel. If I said anything else, this is the right one. Chapter 17. <laughs> Don't blame me if I can't read. I'm getting old. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Hopefully I'll do all right as we go through this. Okay, chapter 17, beginning verse 1. Now the Philistines gathered their armies together to battle. And they were gathered at Sukkot which belongs to Judah. And they encamped between Sukkot and uh, Azekai and Ephes, Demean. And Saul and his men of Israel were gathered together, and they encamped in the valley of Elah, and they drew up in battle against the Philistines. Or the Philistines. Now the Philistines stood on, uh, on a mountain on one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side with a valley between them. Can you see, get the picture of that? You got the Philistines on one side, you got the Israelites on the other side, probably shouting at each other, you know, maybe little skirmishes here and there. But they're ready to go to a full blown war. And a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines, named Goliath from Gath. He was a giant. It was, he, his height was six cubits and, and a span. And he would be significantly taller than Shaquille O'Neal. You know, Shaquille's probably sitting up there seven, eight or something like that, but Goliath was probably around nine or ten feet. And they found skulls, in case some of you guys think this is fictitious. Skulls and bones and things have been found there in the Vatican and other places of giants. Their, their heads, their skulls. They were, they, 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 they're an offspring of the Nephilim, okay, from, from a mold. But that's another story, another sermon, another teaching. Maybe we'll talk about that sometime, but we'll, we'll just keep on going from here, okay? Well, Goliath was, was, was in the Philistine army, and he was a champion. He, and he was six feet, or six cubits in, 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 in a span. He had a bronze helmet on his head. He was armed with a coat of mail. 
and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. And he had bronze armor on his legs and a bronze javelin between his shoulders. Now the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam. And his, and, and his iron spearhead weighed 600 shekels and a shield bearer went before him. And then he stood and he cried out to the armies of Israel and said to them, why have you come out to line up for battle? And we said, why bother fighting? Okay, am I not a Philistine? And you the servants of, uh, of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. If he's able to fight with me and to kill me, then we'll be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you'll be our servants and you serve us. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. I defy you. You're nothing. That's what he's saying. He just comes out now with his insults. He First, he, he's going to battle it out. Why don't we just fight it out ourselves? I'll come down, pick somebody, you know, whoever you want, fight me, whoever wins, you know, you win, also we'll serve, all of us will serve you. I win, you got to serve me. We don't need to have a war over this. Sounds fairly reasonable. But then... We see what's in his heart. Okay, we see what, what an enemy he really is because he defy, He says it, I defy you. And I think the devil wants to do that. He, he will come at us and say, I defy you, I dare you. You're nothing. Right. You're nothing. It was an insult. It was an insult. He was mocking the armies of Israel. But folks, he wasn't just mocking the armies of Israel. He was mocking the children of God because the Israelites were God's chosen, Right? Right? I wonder how, how, how often the devil does that to you. And he defies us every day. Not only by the temptations and things he sets before us, but just his, his, his disdain and attitude for us and against us. And many of us sit back and we take it. So he said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. You see, why, why were they dismayed and greatly afraid? Because they forgot who they were. They didn't know who they were in the Lord. See, they were God's chosen people, but somehow a, a, a lack of awareness came, maybe through the period of time, that uh, they understood they were an army, but they, they didn't see themselves. They did not realize that they had the anointing and the protection of God over them. And I wonder sometimes how often many of us, we can grow up in the Christian faith and we hear the word of God so much. Jesus loves you. He, he's your your conqueror. He's your deliverer. He'll fight your battles for you. You hear that and you hear it so many times that pretty soon you become deaf to it. And you don't, it doesn't sink in anymore. Right. And then when the enemy does come and he says, boo, you, you jump. You're scared. <laughs> because you forgot who you were. Or maybe you never knew. Now, I know this is true, folks. There have been times and I've been in ministry now a long time and the enemy has come at me and I've jumped. God had to remind me sometimes in the circumstances that I went through who I was in the Lord. I'm continually being reminded and having to know who I am in Christ. And many times the Lord will set up situations to show you because he needs to remind you. But it, wouldn't it be better, like the Bible says, to fall upon the rock and be broken than to have the rock fall upon us and grind us to powder? Wouldn't it be so much better if we could learn the easy way? Wouldn't it be so much better if we could take the Word of God that we hear in all of our studies and everything and assimilate it and get it into our spirit once and for all so we don't have to keep going around the same mountain again and again because some of us, man, we live by that song. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes because we keep going around and around the same old battle over and over again. You look at your life, okay? You don't have to take my word for it. Look at your own lives. Some of you are sitting here, you're 40 years old, 50 years old. Some of you are in your 30s. Okay, but, but, but you're going through things still today that you were going through in your 20s at a different level. But you're still going through the same battles. 
still fighting the same temptation, still dealing with the same stuff. When are, when are you going to get the victory? Thank you. When are you going to get it? When is it finally going to manifest itself? It will manifest itself when you understand who you are and decide that you're going to fight back, that you've had enough of it. I'm not going to take any more of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah, give the Lord a hand clap. If I only get three hand claps, somebody's not listening. I came in here tonight, this morning. I didn't know what I was going to say. Because I, the Lord gave me a dream at 3 o'clock or 4 in the morning. I don't know. And he says, this is the message title. And this is where you bring it from. I didn't know what I was going to bring. I had, matter of fact, I thought of another message for, for, for this morning. But the Lord told me, this is what you bring here. And he gave me the dream. I didn't. So, so I, I'm just speaking under the anointing of the, Spirit, of, of the Holy Spirit right now. But this word is for somebody, folks. Yes, man. What, you know, if God is not real in your life, then all you have is religion. Right. Yeah, amen to that. There are churches all over the place today that <laughs> are having Sunday morning services. But, but what, what kind of diet are they being fed? Right. Do you just get together so we can have, walk out of here and have a field good? Say, I did my duty, I went to church on Sunday, and then we live Monday through Saturday in defeat, and we live like the devil, or we, we, we live like everybody else in the world? Or is there something that sets us apart because we have a relationship with the Lord and we know who we are? Yeah, amen. I mean, there, there, there's got to be a difference, folks, because the only way that we're going to change the world is for it to begin in our own hearts. God has to change us. We can't talk about evangelizing the world until we've been evangelized. We can't talk about changing the lives of others until God has changed our life. That is why the church is so impotent today in, the, in this country. Because it talks a good game but doesn't walk the walk. Oh, I've seen preachers on television. I'm going I'm to fight the devil. I'm going to kill the devil. I'm going to stomp the devil. I hear that stuff, and I think that these guys have never been in a fight in their lives. The devil comes at them, and they're the first ones that go crashing down. I mean, anybody can talk a good game, folks, but listen to me. we got to live it. What are you going through today? Don't tell me. But maybe you've got a battle today. Maybe somebody's thinking about leaving. Don't run from God in the middle of a battle. Right. It'll only be worse because the enemy will be waiting for you in the past somewhere. Right. You run, you're going to get you're going to get your, you know what? You know what's going to happen? Somebody be waiting for you. It won't be God. God will call you, but he, he gives you the freedom of choice yeah. to do what you want to do. Let's keep reading, okay? So we know that these cho this chosen army of God, when they were threatened by this one man who was a giant and intimidating, I'll, I'll give him that. But they were dismayed and they were afraid. When the devil talks to you and he begins to threaten you and these thoughts come into your mind, do you become dismayed and afraid? Sometimes, sometimes people do. Yeah. Now David, verse 12, he was the son of that Ephrath of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse, and who had eight sons. And the man was old and advanced in years in the days of Saul. The three oldest sons of Jesse had gone on to follow Saul in the battle. They were soldiers. The names of the three sons who went to the battle were Elab, the firstborn, next to Abinadab, next to him Abinadab, and the third, Shema. And David was the youngest, and the three oldest followed Saul. But David occasionally went and he returned from Saul, from his dad, I mean, I'm sorry, he returned from Saul to, to, feed, yeah, to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistine drew near and presented himself 40 days, morning and night. For 40 days they were camped across 
uh, from each other on, on separate hills. And every day this guy came out intimidating the Israelites. Why don't you come on out and fight me? Why don't you come on out and fight me? Come on, man. Come on, man. Just egging them on. Egging them on. And for 40 days, they, they, they didn't do it. They were afraid. See, 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 sometimes, folks, we go through battles and they, they, they seem like a lifetime until we face them. This is why I said it's like coming around the mountain. Unless you confront the things that the enemy is trying to hit you with, quit running from them. Unless you confront them, you're going to keep dealing with them. They will come up, sometimes at the worst times. But they'll keep coming back. You have to get the victory, folks. You've got to begin to appropriate. You've got to believe it. either what Jesus Christ did on the cross is real or, we, or we, it's a lie. And we're all just sitting here for nothing. We know that it's real. But folks, you've got to appropriate it. It does you no good. See, this is the difference, what I'm telling you right now, between religion and a, a real relationship with God. A real relationship with God, you live it out. Right. Religion is just form. Yeah. The Bible says in the last days, men would hold to a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. We have a lot of people in churches today holding to a form of godliness, but they deny the power because they don't know the power. Right. Yeah. Do you see? And that was the problem with the Israeli or the Israelite soldiers. They, they didn't know the power of God. So they, they, they denied it within their own hearts and they refused to go out and confront this Philistine. They were afraid. And he kept coming back. Day one, day two, day three, day four, day 10, day 15, day 20, day 30, day 40, on and on. Kept coming back. Verse 17. So then Jesse said to his son David, Take now for your brothers an ephah of the dried grain and these ten loaves and run to your brothers at the camp. So the father's basically sending David out to bring food to his brothers. And his brothers are in the Israeli camp. They're about ready, supposedly going to, going to go to war. And meanwhile, Goliath is sitting there taunting them for 40 days. And David comes on the scene, as, as we'll see. So he tells them, carry these ten cheeses to the captain of their, uh, of their thousand and see how your brothers are faring, how they're doing, and bring back news of them. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Eli, Eli fighting the Philistines. So they had these little skirmishes back and forth, you know, and stuff like that. But, the, the, you know, there was still a full-blown war to be fought. And Goliath was still taunting them, you know, coming down and, 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 and trying to get somebody to come and fight them and just did take... Say, look, if I win the fight, you know, everybody serves me. We'll just get it over with like that. And he was intimidating. He was taunting them. So, verse 20, David rose early in the morning and he left the sheep with the keeper and he took the things and he went to Jesse, or he went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the camp as the army was going out to fight and shouting for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had drawn up in battle array army against army. So we know they they were about to go to war. They were about to go, go, go and fight, but they were afraid, of, uh, again, of Goliath. And David left his supplies in the hand of the supplier uh, keeper, ran to the army, and came and greeted his brothers. Verse 23. Okay. Then as he walked with them, there was the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, coming up from the armies of the Philistines. And he spoke according to the same words. So David heard those words. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man Goliath, okay, they fled from him and they were dreadfully afraid. They ran. They were afraid. When they saw this guy, they, 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 they ran away. So the men of Israel said, have you, have you seen this man who's come up? Surely he's come up to defy Israel. And it shall be that the man who kills him, the king will enrich him with great riches, will give him his daughter, and give him his father's house, uh, 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 father's house exemptions from taxes in Israel, and all kinds of, of, of good things. So they're talking about it. Hey, you know, if somebody would go out and take care of this guy, you know, he could get rich. 
Nobody wanted to do it. You know, nobody wanted to do it. <laughs> I think it's kind of funny because Saul was the tallest of all the Israelites and he, he was giving the reward to the little guys. He wasn't going to go out there either. You know? So the other ones that were smaller, he says, hey, you guys go out, I'll give you half my kingdom, you know, basically. But I'm not going out there. So then David spoke to the men who stood by him saying, because David is curious, he's saying, he hears this and he sees what's going on. And he says, hey, he says, what should be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? He sees that this guy's taunting the chosen of God. And he's thinking about this. He's not worried about his size. We all know he was not, not the tallest guy. Little, little guy. I've seen little dogs that can fight. You know? And, and he's thinking, man, you know what? This is an opportunity. I got who, if I, if, I, if, I, you mean if I go out and fight that guy, I, I, I get something, right? What do I get? Wow. He's thinking about it now. Why? Because he's been through the battles before. <laughs> we'll see that. He, he, not necessarily with Goliath, but while he was shepherding sheep, he says, I fought the lion, I fought off the bear. I'm going to take care of you. He wasn't afraid. He was thinking, what advantage do I have if I go out and take care of this guy and I win? My question to you this morning is, what advantage do you have when you win? It, because it will only propel you further. It will let you take the next steps you need to take in your relationship with God. Some of you are only a step away from the reality and the experience that you've been searching for, but some Goliath has stood in the way. And he's taunted you. And, and as long as he taunts you, you will stay where you are until you knock him down. Once you knock him down, you'll move into the level that, you, that God has called you to move into. You'll grow. Some of you that are looking to pastor, looking to minister, you'll, that the, the doors will open up the way you want them to, but you've got to take the giant, the thing that's stood in your way, you've got to take it down. You've got to bring him down. You've got to confront him. So we see it. What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? Now, he, he says this, and I like this. He says, for who is this uncircumcised Philistine that should, de not de 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 that should uh, defy the armies of the living God? Who, who is this guy? Who is this, this, the, 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 this devil, these demonic forces, the things that you're going, who are they that would come to, do, 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 they're uncircumcised, they're impure, they're unclean. Who is the real circumcision, folks? It's you. And he said, look, this, who is this guy? That would defy the chosen of God. We're, we're, we're the, you were the circumcision. I'm going to talk about that. But I'll just kind of jump ahead and start, I guess, because you know, I just wrote it down, but I'll just say it. Romans 2, 25 to 29. You can go there if you want later. Just take it, make, it, make, it, make, it, make a mental note of it. Okay, because the Bible says that we are the circum circumcised of the Lord. Those are, those are not just Jews now, but Gentiles because of the circumcision of the heart. When you ask Jesus Christ into your heart, you have become circumcised. The, the women are circumcised. Yeah, the women and the men. There's the circumcision of heart. Okay, which means you have been set apart. One of the signs of the Jews being set apart in, in the Old Testament was the law of circumcision. On the eighth day, they were circumcised, right? But now when you ask Jesus Christ in your heart, there is a circumcision of heart that takes place. And you are, are, are adopted in, okay, into the inheritance of, 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 of being God's chosen, of being children of Abraham, Abraham's offspring. So that makes you chosen of God. So you have the right to say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? I'm, I'm of the circumcision. Who is this guy? Yeah. When the devil comes in, in whatever form he comes, you've got to ask yourself, who is this guy? Right. How dare, that's what he's saying, how dare this person do this? Yeah. I am the chosen of God. Yeah. See, that was the key. This was why David was victorious in the battlefield, folks, because he knew who he was. Amen. That's right. 
And when you know who you are in the Lord, you don't, you can't lose. You're not going to lose that battle. You won't lose that fight. You're going to win the fight. Because you don't fight in your own strength. You fight in His. You understand? Yeah. Folks, this should be encouraging for some of you. That's right. You know, sometimes, well, I, I'm trying. I pound, I do this, uh, I pray, I pound the, the, the pulpit, I, I, I beat the desk, Lord, help me. Uh, you know, you go through all this stuff. Well, folks, folks, the fight is a fight of trust. It's a fight of faith. It's saying, Lord, I can step back. I don't have to raise my fist. You know, literally, because you're going to do it for me. You have won the victory for me on the cross. You just need to believe them and appropriate it. It's only a matter of belief. It's a matter of trust. Say, I don't have a lot of faith. You have a lot more faith than I do, brother. No, I don't. The Bible says to each is given a measure of faith. You all have the faith. You just got to exercise it. You just got to trust Him. One time I was going through a difficult time in my life. And... The enemy started lying to me. He said, look, you just don't have the faith. I said, well, the Bible says each is given a measure of faith. Satan came back and said, yeah, but you lost yours. And I thought to myself, I just don't have it. So I thought, well, I'll get it. So I started looking at all the books by all these authors I could name. Ten Steps to Faith, Twelve Steps to Faith, How to Have Faith. And, and I started trying to read, you know, books. And the more I read, the more frustrated I got. Because as I read them, I hear all these people talking about uh, the faith that they have, and I realize how much I'm lacking, and it just discouraged me more. And the more I read, the more depressed I got. Until I wouldn't read anymore, and I just sat there on my bed, just thinking, and just near tears almost, just thinking, God, you know, I just don't have it, I'm not going to get out of this, I'm feeling sorry for myself. I, I guess and the Lord spoke to me. He says, he says son, you want to know what faith is? And, and, and I'm thinking, yeah, I want to know. And he says, faith is just trusting me in the situation you're in. It's that simple. You don't need 12 steps. You just need to trust me. That's faith. And whatever you're going through, trust. Trust and obey. There's no other way to be happy in Jesus, right? Is to trust and obey. Trust. That's faith, folks. That's faith. Well, let's keep reading. Yeah, I want to get to, through this. Okay, so we're going to read. I may have to you know, give some commentary, but we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead. Okay, so where was that? Verse 26? Well, 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 we'll just pick it up there. The David spoke to the men who stood by him saying, What shall be done for this man who kills the Philistines and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him in this manner, saying, So shall it be done for the man who kills him. Now, Elab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men, and Elab's answer was, uh, was aroused against David, and he said, Why did you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the insolence of your heart, for you've come down to see the battle. There, some of these people were mocking David because he was willing to fight. And David said, what have I done now? Is there not a cause? Then he turned from him towards another and said the same thing. And these people answered him as the first one did. You know, a lot of times when you're in a battle, people will try to discourage you. But you've got to stay in that battle. See? David was ready to fight. And, the very pe you know, and, and people were trying to discourage him. Like, Who are you? I see people sometimes try to walk with God and I see other Christians try to put their foot on on their neck. Who are you? Don't let anybody hinder you. Submit to those that are in authority in the church, you know, over you. Those pastors that God has appointed over you, submit to them. And, you know, and, and, and because God has given them, uh, given, he, he, he has um, uh, given them as a gift for your group, for your growth. But, okay, when it comes to your brothers and sisters, and the people that come in and out of here, you know, there's always going to be somebody that's going to try to step on your neck and tell you you can't do what God has told you you should do. And you have to, you have to, how would I say it? You got to be have selective hearing. You know, you need to hear the voice of God and not the voice of your critics. Or you're not going to make it. There are some people who are too thin-skinned. 
We need to have the height of a rhinoceros but the heart of a dove. All right? So David, after he's... Okay, let's, let's just pick it up in verse 33, 31. Now when the words which David spoke were heard, they reported them to Saul, and he sent for him. And then David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. In other words, because of Goliath. Your servant will go and fight with the Philistines. I'll take care of this guy. That's what he's saying. And Saul said to David, uh, You're not able to go up against this Philistine and fight with him. You're, for your youth. And, and he, he's, a, he's been a man of war from his youth. Sometimes the, the, the opposition looks incredible. And even those, there are those that are among us that says you can't do it. But, but, but if God says you can do it, you can do it. Yeah. Amen? I can do all things. Right. right. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Remember that. Remember that. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion and a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and I struck it. And I delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it rose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be just like one of them, seeing that he's defiled or defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. See, do you, you see the statement of faith, folks? Yeah. And, and, you know, what we voice in the midst of our tribulation is important because the, the power of life and death is in the tongue. Right? Have you heard that scripture? Yeah. So some people don't think that what you voice matters. It does matter. And when the enemy comes to oppose you, it's, it's very easy to become discouraged and to talk to one another. I can't do this. I don't think I'm going to make it. And so we, we get caught in that. It's, it's a human it's a thing to do almost. But we have to understand that we serve a living God. Okay. And, and this is what David did. He said, look, he remembered how God had delivered him in the past. And he said, look, I will, I, I'm going to defeat this, this giant because God has brought me to this. I've been down this road before. Some of you guys, and you're going through difficult times, but folks, look where you are today. And look where you were uh, uh, two or three years from, 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 uh, from now, in the past. Look where you were. God has brought you step by step to this place. He's been with you. You've already overcome a lot. There are people sitting here, and you're, you're battling things now, but look, look how far you've come. And God has been with you every step of the way. He didn't bring you all the way here, okay, just for you to fail and end up back out on the street or in the jail or anywhere else. What would be the point of that? We would have a schizophrenic God. Then what? I'll bring you over here. Okay, I changed my mind. You're going back. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, it's crazy. God, God didn't bring you out of that mess out there and bring you all the way over here just for you to go end up back out there. So don't go there. Stay in here. Stay in the fight. Stay in the fight. Amen. Yeah, look, I, I, and I speak this to myself as much as to anybody here. We have to encourage each other. We have to stay in the fight, okay? You will break, if you stay in the fight, you'll break through. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, let's, let's, let's pick it up. Find out where I left off again. <laughs> All right. So, Saul says to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Verse 30. So Saul clothed David with his armor, and he put a bronze helmet on his head, so he clothed him with a coat of mail. David fastened his sword to his armor and tried to walk, for he had not tested them. David said to Saul, man, I can't, I can't walk with, with these. I can't get around. This stuff's like falling off of me, all right? He said, give me, a, I don't need this stuff. It's too heavy anyway. So he tested, it didn't work. He took it off. Took all that armor off. I don't need this armor. He said, I'll go in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? So then he took his staff in his hand and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook. And he put them in a shepherd's bag in a pouch, which he had. 
in his sling, for a slingshot was in his hand. And he drew near the Philistine. He came down and he got himself in position. Put himself in, in just the right place. Maybe he, he, I could see him turning, you know, away so that he made sure that the Philistine was facing the sun. You know, like in those westerns where they're about to draw on each other. They're going to have a showdown. And one of the cowboys, he moves a little bit to the left, the other moves a little bit to the right. And the one that's going to win, he positioned himself to where his, his rival is looking into the sun and he's got a clear view of what he's about to hit. You know? That probably didn't really happen that way. I'm just painting a picture for you to make it sound cool. <laughs> but anyway, man, so, so they're getting in position and they're about ready to have this fight. All right? So, so the Philistine, verse 41, so the Philistine came and he began drawing near to David. So they began to approach each other. The man who bore the shield went before him, his shield bearer. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth. Ru ruddy, ruddy, and, and good looking. Just looked like, just like, looked like a little kid, a teenage kid or something. So the Philistine, the, the Philistine, he's a hardened warrior. Probably got battle scars and all kinds of stuff. So the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog? That you're going to come after me with a stick? And the Philistine cursed David and his God by his gods. Dagon, Dagon. He cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, "Come to me, and I'll give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field." And David turned. He had something to say. David said to the Philistine, "You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin." But I come to you in the name of the Lord. I come to you in the name of the Lord. Okay, then that, you know how to fight the devil. You come in the name of the Lord. Are you guys getting this? Are you still are you with me? I mean, it's a long, it's a long, it's a long story, folks. We're doing some reading today, but but it's something that you need to hear. If I just tell you it's not going to have the impact that, that you can go to if you read it in God's Word. He says, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel whom you've defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you unto my hand and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth that all of the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. We'll prove who God really is after I finish with you. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord God does not save with sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's and he will give it into your hands. He, he will give you into your, our hands. It's, see, folks, the battle is the Lord's. Do you, do you, are you understanding? Yeah. Because, look, look, I know I'm speaking to some people here that are going through some stuff today. It's God's battle. You just got to be willing. willing. Willing to let God fight that battle. Willing to, 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 to let Him cooperate. If you draw near to Him, He'll draw near to you. The battle is God's. Amen? Amen. So then... Verse 49, okay? David, oh, well, let me, actually, let me back up. So it was when the, verse 48, when, so it was when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David that David hurried and David ran towards the army to meet the Philistine. They were coming at each other. They, they were going, they were going, they were going to have it out. They ran towards each other. David didn't back, David, David didn't back up and David didn't wait for him. Here's David, a little guy, Philistine over nine foot tall and Dave, David charged him. He's got that slingshot going and he's coming right at him and as he gets into position, man, he lets it go. We'll see what happens. So David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and he slung it and he struck the Philistine in the forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with his sling and a stone, and he struck the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran, he took, oh, it stood over the Philistine, took his own sword away from him, drew it out of its sheath and killed him, then cut off his head with it. 
When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. I don't need to go any further in this story. Folks, if you want a, 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 a book on how, how to prevail over the enemy, this is it. This is a good story. It's true. But this is how you prevail. This is how you fight and, and how you kill spiritually. And there is a time to fight. And there is a time to kill in the realm of spirit. And we already defined all that, so I'm not going to repeat it now. But I really hope this morning that, that, that you understood this and that you got this. Because all of us will live this. All of us will go through the, this. Okay? And this is how we prevail. This is how, you, this is how we do it. Right here. Okay? It's in the Word of God. And we can be encouraged. When you read this, you're not reading fables. Okay, these, these events occurred. History proves them. And, and, uh, and, and in so many places, folks, we, and, and God has proven Himself. And if you will trust God and begin to appropriate Him in your life and begin to, to let God move for you, get out of the way. Get out of your own way. And let God work on your behalf. You will be victorious. Take my word for it, okay? And, 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 and I was going to say, if it doesn't happen, come talk to me. I'll give you a free punch at the face or something. You know? <laughs> because I know God is going to prevail. I know you're going to prevail. Just don't run. Don't, get, don't, don't leave. If you're going to run, run at the enemy, not away from him. All right? All right, Lord bless the word. Everybody give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to pray a closing prayer for my end of it, and I'm going to turn this over to the pastor because I know that he'll have some words. Uh, and I, and I, believe there, I, I believe the Lord is telling me in the Holy Spirit that when he comes up and speaks, to listen to what he has to say because I believe that God is going to anoint him to, to bring something in addition to what I've, I've said that's going to bless you guys. Father, I thank you so much, Lord, for the opportunity to bring your words this morning, Lord. I used to do an altar call, uh, and, and I'm not going to do that. I'll leave it to the pastor. Maybe he may want to do it at the end of his, whatever he says. But Father, we, we seal this word to our spirit, Lord, in Jesus' name. We ask you, Lord, to, to help us, Lord, Lord, to, to, to make us aware of the, 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 the mightiness of the God that we serve, and Lord, aware of who we are in you. And we're not just some anybody out there, but we are, we are chosen, Lord, because of you. You've chosen us. Lord, you've anointed us, and we carry your anointing, Lord, and we thank you for that in Jesus' name. And we seal this word to our spirits today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Powerful message. Here, here's some truth. And most of you are not going to like it, but amen. If you're convicted, praise God. What is it going to be? Are you going to stay down, like my wife said, in the vomit? Or are you going to allow God to pick you up, clean you off, dust you off, and you get to try again? And you get to try again after that. Because it's not if we're going to fail, it's when we fail, what do we do in that failure? What do we truly do in that failure? Do we go back to what we're used to for 20, 30 years that we've done in our lives? And that's do drugs and run amok and, you know, that, that's pleasing to the flesh. That right there is pleasing to the flesh momentarily. Just momentarily. Because at the end of the day, when you sober up or you're coming back into uh, some type of uh, 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 clarity, guess what? Your problem will still be there. Your problem will still be there, no matter which way you want to look at it. And I always speak about the circumcision of the heart. There are root issues in our lives that uh, these... Uh, 
uh, uh, Goliath problems that we have in our lives that we choose not to deal with. And it's easier not to deal with them. And I'm going to be frank and I'm going to be honest with you. It's going to hurt when you deal with them. And you're going to go through it when you deal with them. And, and, and you're going to kick and you're going to scream. But at least you're going through the motions of it. At least you're allowing God to deal with them. You're, you're, you're going through the mountain. You're not going over the mountain or around the mountain. Because in it, it's a forest and you'll get lost. You see, God is the drill. God is the way. He, go, he allows us to go through the mountain, through the trials and the tribulations. And you see, again, let's go back to the foundation of our, uh, 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 of our Christian walk. And it's this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for whoever believes, right? Believes and trusts in Christ will not perish but have eternal life. Our foundation is in the gospel of Jesus Christ. If we stand on that, we will conquer that. Amen. Amen. We are conquerors, we are survivors. In Christ. Not in nothing else. Right? I, I can't deal with these problems through my flesh without Christ. See, that's the answer to your problems. You need to invite Christ into your life. You need to invite God into your life. Maybe there's somebody here that doesn't know how to do that. Maybe there's somebody here that just needs to help up. I invite you to come up. Right. Yeah. Please come up. And, and, and I will lead you into a prayer where it becomes all con conquering. Right? We just have to stand firm in that foundation that Christ has laid before us. Anybody? Yeah. Jennifer. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want everybody to reach out their hands. And I'm not going to go in this mic because I believe it's a personal thing. But I want everyone to come in accordance to this. My wife's a little. It's okay. We love you, Jesse. I'm sorry. Come here. Don't you miss Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know what's going on with you, sister. You know. And, and there's, there's, there's things that, that you have done and maybe people have done to you where it's hard to let go. And, yeah. That is what I'm saying. I'm looking at that. I wasn't just saying that. Father, I thank you. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, I ask that you just come into my sister's life, Lord. You become so real in her life, Lord. You become so, so, so faithful in her life, Lord, where she stands firm in the gospel of Jesus Christ, Lord. Lord, we believe 